This is Mayor Calhoun, good morning. I am the third, the second child of 12 children. I was born in Spanish Fort and we were raised in a one room, in a two room house. We had one bed, some slept in the bed and at night and some slept on the floor, we rotated it. Uh, when I got old enough, my mother brought me over and we picked blackberries for the Malibus. Then when I got a little bit older, I worked in the laundry with my mother. Then a little bit older, I worked at, uh, in the dairy. And then a little older, I worked in the house and we, I walked from, from Loxley to Malibus for 40 cents a day. We didn't have no running water and we didn't have no lights. We didn't have no bathroom. My, da my daddy uh, would build, build a hole, dig a hole in the yard and, and build a little house around it. That's where we had to go. No toilet tissue. We had to use any kind of paper we could find. We moved to Loxley and uh, my daddy farmed. And I, I remember, and this is, my, this is my oldest niece, and I remember when she first started crawling, and we were living in Spanish Fort then. We had no, no hospitals, no, no, uh, no, 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 no medicine. My grandmother used to come from Mobile and go in the woods and get herbs, and, and we would all eat, drink herbs. She'd fix herbs for us, because we didn't have no, uh, no, no hospital and no doctors. Uh, we had just used home remedies. I'm Florence H. Rouser. I was born in 1926 in Spanish Fort, Alabama. My parents moved to Mississippi for a little while, but not long. We came back to uh, Spanish Fort, and we moved from Spanish Fort to Baldwin County. But before we moved to Baldwin County, we stayed with my grandparents, my mother's, on my mother's side. My grandparents uh, took us in, and that's where I spent my first two or three years of life with, back and forth with my grandparents grandmother. At the age of two, I believe it was, I began to crawl. And when I started crawling, my Aunt Mary was in the kitchen cooking. She was frying pork chops, so she tells me. And when she's frying the pork chops, I had two uncles older than me, uh, Hurley's and Robert, they were. And Hurlis came through the kitchen door, ran into Aunt Mary, and Aunt Mary spilled grease on him. When she spilled the grease on him, he was burning very badly. So my grandfather, at that time they had, they only traveled to Mobile by ferry. My grandfather went to Mobile on the ferry and brought my, grand, my great grandmother back to his home. And when he got there, of course, since we didn't have any doctors and the hospitals were unknown to me at that time, <laughs> naturally, but um, my, um, there was no hospital, so my grand, great grandmother started working on my uncle. And from then, she, as Aunt Mary has said, she went and she got herbs and, and oils and whatever she needed to doctor my uncle. And she stayed with my uncle until he was well, practically. Then she went back to Mobile. We moved to Loxley, my, father, my mother and father, 
moved to Loxley, Bowen County. And when they moved to Loxley, my father was uh, farming and chipping boxes. I don't know if you've heard of chipping boxes, but, but he, that's when they would pull the turpentine from the tree by hacking it and placing a cup to catch it. And they would, he would chip the boxes and, and catch the, the, the uh, juice from the tree and carry it to a steel to be made into whatever they were going to use it for. So that took the first six years of my life. My father and mother built a house. They built a house, and Daddy would store his guns over the door. He had two rifles, and he would put those over the door. And that's where they would stay. There were three of us born at that time. My, my um, brother, Mose, my brother, William, and my brother, Johnny. And we were, at, at the time that we were there, uh, at that, in that house particularly, my mother had to work and my father worked. My mother came to Mabus. Mabus was uh, in full bloom then. There was the dairy, the bakery, they had their own everything. The farm, the nursery, all of that, and there were different people over these different houses. So my grandmother worked in the big house, they would call it, and she worked for the Mabus family. And I believe there were about six or seven of them in, in that house at that time. Uh, the mother and father and three sisters, I believe, and a brother. But any, anyway, my mother would come walk to the work in the morning and she would leave around six o'clock and she would come and work for Mavis and around four or five o'clock she would go back. So that was six miles in the morning and six miles in the evening. And that was her day. And she did all of that for 50 cents a day. I can't believe that now, but uh, it was a fact. Aunt Mary would come and take care of us. There were three of us. While Mother worked and Daddy chipped boxes. He worked too. That was his job. And no water, no running water at that time. We didn't have running water. So we had to go to the spring to do whatever we had to do, like wash clothes. Uh, and, and Aunt Mary would come and, and take care of us. And at this particular day, Aunt Mary and Aunt Inez, which was next to Aunt Mary, came. They both came. And Daddy had built a house, he, he struggled. He cut down the trees, made the boards, made the lumber, and built the house. The house was fairly new. My brother at that time, I was five, my brother was about three, and there was a baby, William. William was in the bed. And Mary took the clothes and went to wash. And she, she went to the spring, and like little boys are, full of wonderment and everything, Mose went to the wood box and he looked for matches. And of course he found the matches. And he knew what to do with the matches. So he struck a match and he put it to the wood box that was in the kitchen. We had wood stove and everything at that time. And it started a blaze. 
William was in the bed. He wasn't walking yet. He wasn't uh, crawling, well, just barely crawling. And uh, the box caught fire. And the only thing I knew to do at five was to run for Aunt Mary. So I ran to the, to the spring to get Aunt Mary. And Aunt Mary came to the house and she just did get my brother William out of the bed and out of the house before Daddy heard the gun and he was in the woods and he looks up and he sees the smoke and he comes running. So the house burned down all the way to the ground. My dad, we lost everything. We lost everything. So we went back to my grandmother that was still in Spanish Fort. We went back there and we stayed until we, we, my parents decided what they were going to do, whether they were going to rebuild the house and, and everything, and what they were going to do. In the meantime, that same little boy that set the house on a fire was lost. He walks away from the house in the evening after we had eaten dinner. He walks away from the house and he goes, uh, he wonders. And of course, when he was wondering, the word got out that Moses lost. The whole community, the whole community, white and black, all came together, got on their horses, got their guns so they could contact each other. And, and, and of course, uh, they started looking. They looked from about three o'clock until it was getting dark. Everybody was getting panicky and all. And finally, they had made a pact with each other. If you find him for you go this way, you go that way, you go the other way. If you find him, shoot, um, shoot your gun or scream or holler, whatever you have to do to let the rest of us know that he's found. Okay. They went separate ways. Just about dark, it was, it, you couldn't, see anymore. We heard a gun. The gun shot and every, the, the hoop went up. We have found him. We have found, we have found Mose. Okay. They found Mose at a hog pen, walking around as if he owned it, looking at the pigs, looking at everything. So Mose, they brought Mose back. Everybody went home and we celebrated and all because Mose was found, this little lost boy was found, okay. Mother and Daddy decided, well, we, we, it's too much trouble for us to stay with, with uh, my great grandparents, so my parents decided that they would go back to, to Baldwin County, Loxley, went back. My dad spent days cutting down trees, cutting them into blocks, about 12 to 15 long. And my dad and my mom did what we call, what, what they call, what they taught us to call, <laughs> riving boards. They had what was called a maul and a, and, a, and a hack hammer. I guess that's what it was, a hack hammer. And they would put the, the, the uh, blade into the board and, and hit with the hammer, and that would split the block. And they would do that until, the, until they had enough boards out of that particular block, and they would put that there. When they 
when they got enough boards from those trees and everything. Then we built, my parents, I, I say we because we were all there together. My parents built a board house, what was called a log, a log cabin. We had one room and a kitchen. And we all slept, we had three, they had three, four, three kids then, four, because Johnny was, Johnny had been born. And of course, after Johnny was born, uh, they decided to make me what is called a bunk bed. I cherish that thought today because today I see bunk beds being made and my daddy did the bunk bed on the wall built the, the steps and the, the uh, board for the bed. And of course, um, I had to move. I was the girl, so I moved to the bunk bed. And I was lived in the book bed. And then there were three beds in the house, one for my dad and mom, one for the boys, and one for me. And that's where we live for the next 10 years in that, in that uh, house that was built out of blocks. And we stayed there until, until we were um, getting too big to be close together like that. My mom and my dad felt, you know, the kids are getting big, we got to do something about this. So they did, my dad was, my dad didn't get very much education. He went to school and they, he got so many licks and so many, and I don't mean physical licks, I mean licks otherwise until, um, he decided, I'm going to quit school. So he didn't, he didn't get, get an education. But he was a smart man. He could build things. He could do things. And when he got ready to build a house, after my brother got, uh, went to school and got a little education, when my dad got ready to build a house, he would tell my brother, I want you to put this down on paper. I need the, I'm going to need this to build a house, but I want you to put it down on a paper. And whenever you um, put it down, but, but my dad would, would uh, put the figure, have my brother to put the figures down, and then he would know the answer before my brother could write it down. He was just that uh, good with, with his mind and everything. So he did that, and he built, they des he decided, well, we're going to do something different. So we stayed in that house until my dad built another house. In my dad's lifetime, he built, a, built two houses for his family, but uh, my grandparents then decided that they were going to come to Loxley and they were going to be near, we were uh, there together and all. And my dad and my grandfather, my dad chipped boxes, my grandfather worked at the nursery, my grandmother uh, worked, my great grandmother. Uh, was in still in Mobile. My grandmother worked at Mavis. And when I got big enough, my first job as a uh, young teenager was to make salads for Mavis restaurant. I was 12 years old and they thought I was good at it. So I made salads, but that didn't last long because I didn't make very much. I didn't work for the 50 cent, but I didn't get what 
I think it was something like 15 or 20 cents a day or something like that. I don't know yet. But uh, anyway, I was good at babysitting. I could keep children. And then I was, uh, had my education, was growing too. I was in Baldwin County training school in Daphne, Alabama, and I was, um, and I was a teen, well, I was past teenager I, because they took us only in the seventh grade. And that's what I did until college time. I babysat Mobile. They would hear about me and they would call me and I would uh, go to Mobile and work. I would go to Grand Hotel down in uh, Point Clear and work for those families down there. And I'll, then I decided that I would go, my mom decided that I would go to college. I was sitting here thinking about when we, did, we didn't have running water. We had to take our clothes to the branch and wash them. And mom and them, my mother did, they would make quilts and they were too heavy to bring them, uh, rub them on the wash it on the rub board. Uh, we should put them in a big tub and we'd get in there and stomp them with our feet until they got clean. Um, we didn't know what a car was. We didn't see a car. The first car my daddy owned was a T model. And uh, everybody was on horse and wag, on horse and wag, or either horse and back. We only had three months to go to school, and we had, before we moved the Locksleys, we had to walk from on the other side of 31 to over on this side of 90 for school, and they had one little room and one teacher, and we all had to get in that one room for school. Um, so, uh, you know, we had no hospital, hospitals, nothing. I'm the mother of three children, and one of my, my youngest daughter passed with uh, heart trouble. And uh, they all was born at home. All 12 of us was born at home because no we had no hospital. I have, a, my, I have a nephew that's come in a few minutes ago, and I must tell you this, uh, when he was a baby, her, one of her sons, we told him, I guess about, what was it, about 10 miles through the woods to the church to have him christened. We, we, we never went hungry. We never went hungry. We, we had no stoves. My daddy raised what we ate. We had no stoves, but we never went hungry. But, and then we thought it was good because we didn't have nothing to prepare it with. But when I look back over my life now, I, think, I thank God that he has made it so much better for us than it was then because my, I, my children was born in a log, little log cabin with just a kitchen and one bedroom. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, then it seemed, seemed like we'd have nothing to compare it with. Like I say, we thought that that was good. <laughs> that was good. So I worked at, we worked, we were all raised just about at, here at Malibus. Uh I worked in the laundry with my mother. I worked in the house with my mother. I was managed at the motel over there until I got a job in Loxley at the Bowling Wholesale Floors. And I stay, I worked there that till about, I guess about 30 years. But, but referring back, when I used to have to work in the house, maybe for 50 cents a day. And I remember one day this lady said, she didn't have no money, but she had a dress that her daughter had uh, been wearing. I think she said she wore it twice to school. So she told me, she said, we don't have no money, can I give you this dress? And I worked all day for one dress for my oldest daughter. And she was so happy. She thought she, she thought she had something when I went home with that dress for, for her. 
And uh, I was born April the 13th, 1915. I get a birthday next month, at April the 13th. And uh, I think I told you about, my, this, this, was, this was a nursery here that my daddy used to, uh, he run this the nursery where this building's at. And I was working at the motel, and I got mad with him over at the motel, and I came over here, so I'm going over there and work with my daddy. And I went over there one day and come over here one day, and, and that work was so hard, I went right on back over there. <laughs> I went right on back over there to the motel, and, they, and the manager was good enough to take me back into the motel. Uh, I worked at the laundry, I, work, I worked at the laundry, I worked at the dairy. We, we had a cannon factory, I worked at the cannery factory. We had the, the Malibus had a chicken farm, they had a, uh, they, they had um, horses, they had uh, cows, they had, a, I worked at the dairy, they had, they had, uh, they had sheep, and they had chickens, and they and they had a. I worked a little bit at the um, ice house. They had an ice house. I worked a little bit there. We had the laundry. We had to walk about, I guess, about a half a mile to the laundry. So they finally built the laundry at the house where we didn't have to go walk that far and carry the clothes back and forth. They had a bakery in Mobile, and uh, once a week they brought the clothes from Mobile, the laundry from Mobile over here, and we had to wash the laundry over there. This is my brother Johnny, and Johnny is 86 years old. 86, yes. Will be 87 in June. Uh, he's a little, uh, I'm a little bit older than he. I'm, um, I'll be 93 in uh, May, May 17. But uh, my brother Johnny has, he tells me about a Mary taking him and having him prayed for. He feels that that's a big part of his success in life, that he was prayed for when he was a baby, and he was carried so far, those 12 miles that he, was, he went and there and back, and he feels that that's, that's a part of his, his um, success. And who knows, we may feel the same way. But anyway, um, Johnny is the third brother out of eight. As Aunt Mary has said, my, the uh, Mavis Plantation afforded jobs for most of, most of our family. And uh, as she has said, the dairy, the, the uh, laundry, my mother became the manager of the laundry after it was built. So, that afforded me to go in and out visiting my mother and, and helping and in the house. And that's what I did. Uh, my grandmother worked for the Mavis for about 40 years. My mother, Aunt Mary, I heard her say she worked 30 years. And my mother worked uh, because she worked for both nursery and house. She worked when she uh, worked for the nursery. That's when she would come night and evening and morning and spend all those hours back and forth. And she worked for the nursery when they built the, the um, uh, laundry, which they had to do uh, to help out, help the, the uh, workers and the places after they worked the nursery and the dairy and all of those were separate entities from the big house. 
we called it. We called it the big house. And of course, they had, um, like Mary said, Mrs. the Mavis man was never there, but he was always in Greece. And from time to time, they would go back to Greece and then back, back to the United States and, and so forth. Uh, the Mavis plantation afforded all of us jobs, and we were one big, great family. We were one family. We were definitely, I mean, when, they, when we hurt, they hurt. They would see that we had food, they would see that we had, had uh, things that they would give them, like the bakery, we, we didn't have to buy that much bread and, and all, and, and when they cooked and so forth, they saw that we all had some. So we were, we were a big family. And, and we worked together. And, and of course, uh, in our early years, we, we had jobs because they afforded us jobs as teenagers and as, as children of, of, of the workers that were there and so forth. So we appreciated that. But there was never a time when we felt that we were anything other than a part of that big family. So we went, we uh, went to college. Most of us were able to go to college. My uncles, two uncles, went to the service, served in the military. My brother served in, in, the, in the army. My, my uh, brother, another brother served in the Navy and and this was uh, Richard served in the Navy. Um, Robert served in the Army. He was an uncle. So this, this is where we, we are. Johnny decided he didn't want to go to college. He wanted to go. He wanted to have his own business. So he first went to a plant and served in, in this plant for 20 years. Then he came out and he and his sons provided uh, a carpentry contracting business. And that's where he has spent, I know, the last 35 or 40 years in that uh, contracting uh, business with his sons. And now he's retiring, and so am I. I went to college and I finished in home economics and nursing. I had part-time nursing, and then I went to volunteer at school one day, and they begged me to go and finish my degree in home economics, so I went back and got home economics. And I spent 36 years in the classroom with children. And it has been a pleasure and a joy. And right today, those children don't miss a week. Some of them will call me. One or two of them will call me. So I'm, I'm blessed. I'm really blessed. And I think we all are to have had the kind of, I would say, working relationships and, and that we have had and are so blessed. So that's, that's where we are. We can, we can give credit to, to the Mavis Plantation for a big part of our family uh, survival, and we can give, I would say, credit to our parents, our grandparents, because they, they saw to it that we, we really, really, really got what we needed. We, it may not have been what we wanted, but we got what we needed. And that's where we are. My daddy was a fisherman, and uh, he, would, he fished for a living. And he, had, he would catch the fish, and we'd get these big old catfish. He'd cut the head off them, and Mama would take the head and make us a stew and he'd take the fish to Mobile 
It, he didn't have no, the boats didn't have no motor. They had to oar them to mobile these little old boats. Take him all day, all night to get over there to carry the fish to Mobile, and then he'd have to come all the way back home in that, you in that little boat. And that's where my grandmother lived in Mobile, and sometimes she'd get on that little boat and come back with us, spend a few days, and he'd have to get on that, get in that little boat and take her, <laughs> take her back home. And uh, we ate what, whatever, my mother cooked. We didn't have a choice like children do now. We ate whatever they gave us. We we had uh, we didn't have a dining room. We had a, my my dad had built a table with some boards, and then he built a, some chairs with the, some boards. And we all had our place in the kitchen where we ate. And we didn't have china. Uh, then we had. Ten for pans and plates that we had to eat out. Of. Everybody had their own plate. Everybody knew their own place in the, in the dining room to eat. And uh, it wasn't. I don't like this, and I don't like that. We ate whatever they gave us to eat. If it was nothing but peas and cornbread, that's what we ate. Uh, my daddy'd go. Uh, some of y'all might not know about possums and things. My daddy'd go in the woods at night and catch possum and we eat. We, my mother would, mother would uh, bake potatoes and we'd eat them. And when we worked on the farm, we didn't get no money. We got some of whatever we harvest. If it was potatoes, we got a sack of potatoes. If it was beans, we got beans. It wasn't no, we didn't get no money for working on the farm. We just got some of whatever they harvest. I'm sitting here now. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to my cousins, um, my cousin Sheila and my cousin Leroy. They are both beautiful and aggressive people, always doing something, always moving, always helping. And we are, we are so thankful for that, that we have been in our long years, we have been able to, I would say, be thankful and know that God is with us whenever we see these beautiful children at work. Hi, my name is Sheila, and, and um, this is a very special day. This is my cousin, Leroy. Um, I'm, I am going to basically try to summarize or sum up some of the things that have been said here today. And first, I am so thankful uh, to God that the sun was shining today and that Aunt Mary, uh, that would be 104 years old next month, was uh, able to, she was ready when I got to her house this morning. She was ready, she was all uh, ready to go and, and that was a blessing. And our cousin Florence that came in today from Bruton, Alabama, uh, that she traveled in to be with her. These are her, these aren't Mary, and they may have been said earlier. These are her two oldest nieces and nephews. Um, and just to, to summarize a little bit about the family, you heard Aunt Mary mention a lot about Loxley, Spanish Fort. Uh, the family actually, their grandfather and grandmother resided in Mobile. Their grandfather was born, uh, Aunt Mary, and I'm speaking of Aunt Mary, Aunt Mary's grandfather was born in Mobile, Alabama. And he later in life acquired property in Spanish Fort, Alabama. That land was deeded by President Theodore Roosevelt back in the 19, 1906, I believe was the date. However, he had been living on the property prior to that. And under an uh, act that was passed by Congress, he was able to buy the land and they settled there, which is exactly where she was born. And without me even knowing it, and I think it's a God thing because of, of just faith and our belief, it's actually where my house sits now, I, which I had no, no idea when we bought the property that that was the land that we were buying. Um, and then in Loxley, which you heard them talk about a lot about Loxley, that property was actually bought on, their grand, on her grandfather's side of the family, on her, grand, on her mother's side, the pilot side of the family, and that was 185 acres. When we were little kids, we actually played on 
Interstate 10 while it was being built. The, uh, the, the stream that they talked about, where they used to get water from, uh, we, we've got pictures of our cousins swimming in that stream, which I'm not so sure we would do that today. We did a lot of crazy things, you know. We didn't think much as kids about the, the snakes in the woods. We didn't, we didn't think much about what was in the woods, period. We just went in the woods and played. So um, we watched, I, I learned how to drive on the highway out there, you know, and I, I, I think, just hearing the stories about uh, Malbus and the Greeks, and I've talked to uh, Tommy, which is one of the, the Malbus family members, and he said to me, I stopped by one day, and he said to me, he said, you know, and he was in tears. He wanted Aunt Mary and Aunt Carrie, and Aunt Carrie uh, transitioned last year. She was her sister. Uh, he said, you tell them to come and have tea cakes with me. And that was, a big, that was a big deal. You know, they would make tea cakes and, and, and drink tea together. And he said, you know what? He said, what, the, what people around here don't know is that we were family. You know, you hear the terminology plantation. A lot of people think uh, it's just a perception, plantation, slavery. But no, there were no slaves. Uh, you have to go back to the population in this area. The Greeks migrated over here. They bought a lot of land. I look at the trees outside and I think Papa Sun, her father likely planted all these trees, you know, but they worked together. Um, I recall, you know, uh, Mama Kelly said, if I got on the floor, Miss Malvis got on the floor. You know, we worked together to build what we had to do to make this area very successful, you know. So, um, Leroy, I was, try I was gonna try to get Leroy to say something, but uh, he decided that he wasn't going to say anything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say thank you. And, and let me just say this about him, which I, again, it, it, you know, you look at all these generations that have come along and where a Mary went to church is actually where he went to school and church is where he attends church today, uh, which is, is uh, Mount A, which is right down, Mount A Baptist Church, which is right down the street. So the seed has been planted. You know, we are, we are, we are godly people. Uh, we, have, we have many success stories in this family where people went on to do great things. We have, we have those hidden uh, heroes that even work at NASA, you know, uh, different generations that have worked at NASA. The, the service to the military is phenomenal, uh, educa educators, teachers, you know. So they have contributed tremendously to the community and what the success in this community. And we thank you for allowing us this opportunity to document and put on record the very historical data of our family, which was one of the first families that landed on the soils here in Baldwin County, Alabama.